Hey, welcome to Beer Brawl number one. In this episode, we did hazy IPAs. I had Kent Cortese from Boombox Brewing, uh, Tim Mortensen, and Ryan Baker from Camera. They were all, uh, we all got together and tried these five delicious hazy IPAs. Um, the first one you see, you see here on the left is uh, Fuzz from Structures Brewing in Bellingham, followed by Bright from Treehouse Brewing in Massachusetts, Hetty Topper. Right in the middle there, that's the original, the OG Hazy IPA from uh, from Vermont, from the brewery called The Alchemist. Next up was uh, a collaboration between Gigantic Brewing and Superflux. It's called Pretty Much Yeah. And then last but not least was uh, Juicy AF from Boombox Brewing. And we basically took these beers. We each took one beer out of a bag and poured it. So we only knew of one of these beers. And then we sat down, compared notes, figured out was which ones we liked better and why. Uh, Kent is very well known for his hazy IPAs. That's one of the ones on there on the, on the right hand side, the juicy. And so he kind of broke down the style for us and the history of it and just really gave us a good rundown on what makes a good hazy IPA. And uh, the numbers are actually reversed. So when we talk about one, we're talking about the one on the right. And we're talking about three, four, five, it goes the opposite way. So uh, here we are just setting up and getting everything going and uh, take it from there. Yeah. All right, so it's off. Okay, we got five hazy IPAs, New England IPAs, Northeast IPAs, and yeah, all the juicy IPAs. So uh, Ken's from Boombox Brewing, uh, Brewing, and they kind of specialize in this style of beer, so maybe you just give us a quick run out of what sure. that is. Uh, the beer is really popularized out of Vermont. Uh, brewers out there were known for making uh, super hop forward, new American style or Australian uh, hop varieties. Uh, they tend to be a lot hazier than all the other beers, kind of went against the grain. And over the years, other brewers started picking up on it, refining it even more. Beers have gotten hazier and the hop bills I think have been going up and they've just kind of evolved. And uh, now we're starting to see the beers getting brewed all around the world. Uh, obviously Vancouver, there's a bunch of us doing it now. And uh, it's even Portland, some of the breweries that are starting to pick up with Great Notion and stuff. So it's, it's becoming a style that's quite common and extremely popular. Yeah. What's, what, what causes the haze? Like what, cause before beers were, everyone's like clear, it's got to be clear. Now, why, why, why is it hazy? Sure, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, some of them are debatable. A lot of it is, <laughs> is uh, they're not filtered. Uh, generally don't use a lot of findings in them. Uh, so they're not running them through centrifuges or any filtering pads. Uh, the yeast they use tends not to flocculate out and the heavy dry hopping seems to stick to the, uh, the yeast causing that haze. Okay. So over time, we'll see them start to drop out. And then while the bottom of the cans, uh, you'll see some sediment fall out, and that's normal. Yeah. Uh, you can even get some chunks in some of them, depending on uh, how much yeast or how old the beer is. Uh, but it's generally a combination of all that. Plus, they use adjuncts like flake wheat, flaked oats, stuff with high protein content, and that stays in suspension in the beer. The protein's given the haze. Yeah, yeah kind of like a half a bison. Right? Oh, okay, yeah. And you were saying something before when we were talking about some people using flour. Is that a natural thing, or is that kind of a rumor? Uh, <laughs> I don't know anyone that does. Okay, I've okay, heard yeah. people might have or in recipes. I don't see the benefit to it. Not uh, like in a commercial setting. No, yeah, yeah, I don't think that would really do anything. It'd be something that might gum up your mash. So yeah, I've heard rumors, but I don't know anyone who's actually put flour in. Yeah. Okay. Their mash. Okay. So when you trade, we got five different beers. We have them from all over. I'm not gonna give you specifics because no one knows exactly where they came from. But uh, tasting these IPAs, what are we kind of looking for? Do you guys have any input on what you look for when you buy one of these IPAs? What you really want? Like, you're looking for like a citrus, or you're looking for melon, you're looking for mango, bitterness, whatever. Not too bitter, no citrus. No citrus? Oh no, no lots of well, lots citrus. Right. citrus. Kind of drinkable and refreshable, refreshing, but you know, still with a nice. Hot kick to it, basically. Yeah, same thing. Low, lower bitterness. Uh, a lot of tropical or citrus flavors. Something close to like juice with a super big aroma. Yeah. And mm -hmm. hopefully some flavor that follows the aroma. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, the ones that are up there in ABV. Yeah, 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 that's one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then that it, the fruitiness kind of gets balanced out by that slight bit of heat. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I've used uh, wise. These, what's the idea you range roughly for these, like 50 and not under kind of thing, or? Yeah, probably anywhere from 40 to 70. 47, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah there's quite a large range, and then how IBUs are measured is kind of 
tricky too. Like it's th theoretical as usual. Most people use, yeah, they're not actually which are a lot higher than actual, more or less for these. But I, I suspect most of these would be in the forty to seventy IBU range. I see. Where a typical West Coast is easily like ninety to hundred. Yeah, 80 or more. Or more. <laughs> All right, we'll start drinking these. Cool. So, yep. Juicy, citrusy type of beer. Really hazy, too, compared to the other ones. Yeah. But that one's like dense. Some of these you can kind of see through a little mm -hmm. bit, but that one's super dense. Like the complete absence of carbonation or the carbonated feeling. All right. It's just gone. It's good. And so you open your carbon these beers, are you looking for kind of like two volumes, like a more moderate carbonation? Or? Yeah, traditionally, traditionally, not like the old style, but they tend to have a slightly lower carbonation, I think, overall, uh, to help with the mouthfeel. But uh, that's not to say they all are. Some are actually fairly highly carb, just help push the aromas. So, all right. Yeah, I don't know if there's an actual preference. Level, yeah, yeah, preference. I know a lot of people tend to go on the lower side. There's a real funky smell. Yeah, I don't know if it's like cantaloupe or... Yeah, yeah, cantaloupe, yeah. I mean, I can't smell very well. Like, my ability to smell is not great. <laughs> yeah, there's something chippy like, hits. Hits when I was a kid in hockey. Yeah. And uh, I got my nose cauterized like three times when I was like seven years old. Yeah. So my nose is just like scar tissue inside. I mean, I can smell things, just not... I'm going to be with saying that. Yeah, I, just don't, I, I don't think that explain, like, I smell it, but sometimes find it hard to think what, like, that reminds me of, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, like citrus, but you know, but you know, sometimes depend like which type or like yeah. you know, mm -hmm. melon is very. I think that's an easy smell to detect, right? mm -hmm. but you know, some of the other ones, it's, it's a blur of just something good something. smell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's always like, oh, it's fruity, and this one like it's like stone fruit or jackfruit. I'm like, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, some of the descriptions the people pull out sometimes are pretty funny too. Yeah. <laughs> Number three is, oh, number three is different. It's got that, I think it's probably an older example. It's got kind of that off, like once the hops start to drop. Yeah. A little bit of that going on. That's probably, you know. Been a few weeks past this prime, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, so just so for the record too, some of these beers were sent out probably about three weeks ago to me. And some of these, one of these I had sit in my fridge for a couple weeks. And then one of these is probably pretty fresh. So they're not like all on it. An even playing field as far as freshness. But you were saying too, like some of your beers, like you won yeah, this choice for like a one day old beer and yeah, cool enough, like a two month old beer or something. Exactly. So most of them, a lot of people want to drink them as fresh as humanly possible. Um, I find they tend to get better a week or two weeks in the final, like in the can or the keg. Yeah. I don't know why that is necessarily. Maybe they're getting turned around too quickly. And even like uh, John Kimmich from Heady Topper, he said the same thing. He prefers Heady Topper a couple weeks in versus straight out of the bright tank. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's almost counterintuitive where everyone, I want the freshest IPA possible. Sometimes it takes a week or two to balance out. And I found a lot of ours got better over a week or two, sometimes three. Then yeah. I like, start hitting that point. You know, and it could be four to six weeks where they start dropping off, and some drop hard and fast, and some can actually age out a bit. All right. Yeah. They're still near the end, though they're still not as good. I remember <laughs> your, your triple IPA, you were like, hold on a week. Yeah, that one for definitely sure. made a difference, right? Oh, my drop. My drop, yeah. I had that yeah. in the degree, and I had it a week or two was, after. It was yeah, it's way too fresh. Yeah. Yeah, but you got a shit ton of hops in there, right? Yeah. Like, all your hops that you had left. So the hop. dang. That was. That beer just was like, just, just so like. Dump the entire hop freezer and all that. Like the top, I took a photo, it's just the whole fermenter was just covered in hops. And, the, and that was why I needed more time because we couldn't get the hops out. Yeah, all right. And that was like, if you yeah. had it, there was that bit of a burn, the yeah, acid yeah. burn. So it wasn't, it wasn't like the bitterness, but you're actually, it was the hot particulate that was burning in your mouth. It was like 10% too, wasn't there some or not? Yeah, yeah, it's 10 or 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. So, yeah, we're hoping, but we're really ambitious trying to turn it around. <laughs> Triple in like two weeks it was kind of ridiculous. Mm. It was good coming one. to the end of the time there, so you had to do it now. Yeah, that was the last one. So it's like, go out with a bag. Go out with a bag. <laughs> no, that was a great deal. I wish I had have got some more stocked up, but. Number 40, port number four, right? Yeah. yeah.
I definitely get what you're saying about three, right? You can. Yeah. I used to uh, all the American IPAs that you could buy locally. That was the flavor I thought was supposed to be hoppy beer because they're always aged. Yeah. I went down to I don't know, I can't remember where I was in the states. It's California. Anyway, the, uh, ordered like a fresh thing of like arrogant bass or something like a stone beer, and it was didn't taste like this. Doesn't taste like what I thought it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because that was the difference between the aged IPAs we're getting here versus some of the fresh ones. Mm -hmm. But I think we're seeing a better job with some of the fresher IPAs getting imported in and then also sure. then locally too when we got yeah. local beers yeah. we buy yeah. it helps. But yeah, that that's that flavor. I remember when I first got here, I was drinking like uh Stone is one of them and Dogfish Head, and then they yeah. both kind of disappeared and I heard it's because like Dogfish Head was hearing that their beer wasn't well received here because it was old by the time people actually get like, oh, this is not a big of a deal, it's not that good. They're like, well, we have been sending cool trucks and stuff like that. And First time um, Stone um, enjoy by, you know, the stores yeah. are getting it the day before it's yeah. past yeah. the day. And, and even like a month after, you know, that it's kind of like, you should, you should be slashing the price after that. Like, you're yeah. basically yeah. telling me it's, it's not good now, but I mean, it makes a big difference sometimes. Like, I remember, those ones, you know, you could kind of tell they were dying, like, that's a problem, yeah. Mm -hmm. so who knows, like, in transit in the warehouse, they're probably not refrigerated. Yeah. yeah. Or you're getting put warm and then cold, and then you get taken over. Yeah, I'm always so pedantic yeah. about that, like, yeah. you know, you yeah. want to get it straight in the fridge and don't want it to go warm. I mean, as long as it's not going hot, right, basically. Yeah, the key is, like, these beers are really fragile compared to even other beers, because mm -hmm. there's so much hops in them. Um, that they need to be really taken care of, especially temperature is a huge, huge thing. So yeah. we always try and keep it, once you start cold crashing it and uh, moving forward to the bright tank carbonation packaging, it's got to be kept as cold as you can mm -hmm. and maintain that. So once it gets out to the stores, we kind of lose that control. But if you're at a store and you're looking at these beers and they've got a stack of them and they're not in the cooler and they're just sitting there or they're in a window display, whatever. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sitting in the sun in a window. <laughs> Even if it says it's a fresh can, you're way better. We have one, we have uh, uh, some Ultra Deluxe, one of our beers stored, ended up being stored warm. We had a couple four packs that we pulled out and we had in fridges and we drank them side by side. And even though that one was only warmed up for a short period of time, it was a significant difference between that beer and the other. So yeah, if you, hopefully it's kept cold up to the point you buy it, then keep it as cold as you can in your yeah, fridge yeah. and try to drink it. And then like, you know, some of them get better as they warm up, but do that in your glass and heat them up in your hand and let, let the yeah, warm sure, them up yeah. and get the nice flavor. But so you can drink it then, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, but I try and store them pretty cold and it'll really prolong the life and maintain the hot character because, yeah, we noticed, yeah, the, you know, I'm, I'd be scared, yeah, at a restaurant if they keep their kegs, if they're not in the coolers and stuff, with, with especially with this beer. It goes with all beers, but IPAs and especially Northeast. Yeah. <clears throat> If I buy an Imperial Stout and it comes from the fridge, I, I'm not as worried. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I can put that in my cellar. You know, at times I'd say, do you have one that hasn't been in the fridge? With Imperial Stout, it has to, if, like, it's pretty hard to even notice, but like you yeah. said, these are so sensitive, right? Like, just a slight little, you can, you can notice it so much more. Yeah, it'll really uh, accelerate the aging process of the beer, right? Yeah. I and mean, with them being in cans, like, the cans don't insulate as well either, right? So if they're out for long, or not even a short period of time. Yeah, you're right with that too. But the cans also are good for the block of yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, you, you guys wouldn't see that as much. Just your beers wouldn't sit on the shelf for very long. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to go and see, you guys did the, the takeover at uh, 12 Kings. That's right. I missed the one because I don't usually drink Wednesday nights because I work late. And I was yeah. like, I'll go there the next day. On they Thursday after work, and it's right by my ass. I'm like, what the fuckers? Normally, <laughs> normally tap takeover for a week. There's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I went over to one at Rogue, you know, like a week after they had the. Um, Elsmith? Yeah, 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 that one, yeah, when we got a bit of leftovers yeah. and yeah. got to try the Thai and you know, a few. So I didn't have to try Thai, but it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, wait, did I try Thai? So, or they still had that. I'm surprised I didn't kick. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had a couple they had, of other, they had the Wee Heavy and some of that, but. Had the Wee Heavy. Those aren't as popular though, right? Yeah, like, everyone wants the Speedway. They had Speedway yeah, yeah, and Thai. Yeah. I don't think they had the Barley Wine. Yeah. You can only do one flat. It's like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had the Barley Wine at uh, Parallel. Well, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I don't know if it's still there or not, but. I remember them saying it was there. It was on Sunday. You, you yeah, were there, right? Yeah. I 
It's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next morning wasn't good. I was, uh, I, I was like, there's going to be some sore heads and talents. Yeah. Right <laughs> Barley Wine Festival on a Sunday. Yeah. yeah. I, I was. Barley Wine is interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a style where you just, you know, uh, like one of these. You yeah. Can just yeah. Enjoy it for 40 minutes. Just savor the flavor of it. Plus, they would warm up so much. Yeah. The number one, I can drink that tall boy. This one here? Yeah, this one's really good. Minutes. Yeah. Done. Yeah, yeah. you drink it fast? Oh, this, no problem. Oh, no, I think it's a Bali one. No. Oh, no, no. <laughs> this number one here. Yeah, yeah this one. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, just that, so... I think that leaning towards that so far. That one's pretty good. It's so drinkable, and I'm pretty sure the ABV on this is not four or five. <laughs> I'm thinking, like, so far for me, one and five. I like the thing. We're about to hit five. Definitely yeah. one. Yeah. Five is interesting. my favorite so far. It's not as... It's not like a, it doesn't have that same like feeling in my mouth, but it's almost lemony. Yeah. I find it too like all the hops too, like it kind of sits in the back of my tongue. And yeah. I don't always enjoy that. Like some of them do it well, and some of them like you know drink some water after. But this one's nice and smooth. Though. Yeah, I first uh, hazy IPA I had that was actually bitter last week. And it's a weird, weird feeling. Yeah. Yeah, you don't get a lot oh, of fruit. Oh, the one you mentioned to me? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah, not a lot of fruit character out of it, and just that bitterness sat there with the weird mouthfeel of a hazy eye. Just no balance at all? No, not really. Can you pass me that? Yeah. Right here. Oh, no. Yeah, thanks for that. Start figuring out what I'm going to yeah, I mean, like, the end, so. There's so many people doing it, but still, like, you try ones, and it's like, after getting such high caliber beers, yeah. you know, yeah. if someone does one, it, it, Previously, it would have been that's that's a pretty good beer, but now, now like I think everyone in town, the, the standards are being raised, and like you're saying, like the not as, not as many imports, they're not as desirable now because they've been sitting there, and I can get fresh local stuff, and you know you're supporting a local brewery. Mm -hmm. It's kind of more incentive to yeah. buy local. Yeah, yeah. Totally. although some of the American beers being brewed down the street now, right? That's yeah, yeah. Fresh, yeah. yeah. The American beers being brewed here. Mm -hmm. Which do you know exactly? Odin's brewed here. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. that's why they're so cheap. Really? Yeah. I went and bought one the other day, like two bucks and 30 cents. I'm like, oh, <laughs> buy a couple of those. I bought it for next morning, it'd be yeah. more expensive. Yeah. Oh, Odin, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 So they have been there. Try that stuff. I'm not sure. I bought that for more. Yeah, I don't know. I've been on the list. Yeah. It's the first time I have it in Seattle, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple breweries down there, American ones. Makes sense. They save on the import. Yeah. It's probably cheaper to buy ingredients here too in Canada. It's all this so good for the market. Yeah. Yeah. Should it become a dollar? It can, oh. it can yeah. be too. It depends on what their malt feels like. It's some of the most popular malts made in Canada. Yeah. And, uh, like Gambrinus, yes, Malt, well. and yeah, yeah. Uh, Armstrong is in it, or like mm -hmm. it's in BC. So it's in BC for sure, yeah. So it's, yeah, it might be if they use Canadian malt. And I think most of them use Canadian organic malt, so stuff like. Uh, Hop works and stuff that that may maybe they were decided to boost on north of the border probably. Well, so for it's one one to five, but you can use fractions. So you want four point two or four point three or whatever. Go every you have a fraction. Yeah, <laughs> weird fractions too. Yeah, three point seven seven three. I kind of like the flavor of the three. Like I know it's on to the style. There's, there's, some, that, there's an off flavor. There is, there is, yeah. Not enjoy. It reminds me of like getting like an old body wine that's been oxidized. Like I had someone give me a 2008 uh, one from Hike Place. Yep. And it's like, so it's like eight years later I drank it. It's like, it's not, it's not red, but I kind of like it. Not a weird one though, so. What's the oldest beer you've ever drank? Probably not one. One yeah. from 2008, I bought one. I drank a beer on its ten, the day it turned 10 years. Wow. A, guy, a guy gave me um, one of the stone Epic Vertical, the 2006, so that on 2016, drank it the day it turned 10. Yeah, I've got a still good. I've got a 2011 yeah. Cellar Dweller that I'm yeah. hanging on to for no particular reason yeah, at this point. That'd be good. Yeah, the old foil one. I put one of those um, mm. Thor's Hammer away and put it like locked and then like sealed in one of those, you know, the tubes. And for do not open until 2025, so we'll see if I can make <laughs> hold out. Put it away, forget about it. Yeah, no, I think I should be able to. Alright, so we'll go a couple more minutes and write down your scores. And we'll add them up at the end. Go that pen again? Yeah, sure. Thanks. 
They got too much going on. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned mouthfeel a bit earlier. That's another trademark of the styles. So trying to get that pillowy mouthfeel, kind of that thick, almost like juice yeah. kind of mouthfeel, which is a tricky. Like traditionally, West Coast, you try and get it as dry as possible, yeah. thin as possible. Mm -hmm. And then usually they're crystal clear. Now you're making a beer super hazy, and you want to have that that kind of pillowy. That's the notes coming to, right? Yeah. Notes comes into play. And do, you, do you match a higher temperature as well, or is it still below 65, 66? Or so ours tend to be a little bit higher than maybe the West Coast mashing, but I find even the, the salt additions probably help with the mouthfeel as well. Okay, right, right, right. Um, yeah, and then all the oats and stuff too, but it's, uh, yeah, trying to, the first beer that I really got that was with, uh, when Superflux was machine at Calcers, and I can't remember which batch it was, but I just remember that. Yeah. Matt was just nailing that really pillowy, cloudy, yeah, that uh, cloud kicker. Yeah. <laughs> that was like two years ago. Yeah, the, yeah they were the front runners in yeah. BC. Yeah. Like, they were making them, I think uh, Bridge was the first one to package with uh, Sidecast. Right, that's right. Yeah. Jeremy did it, but they were really nailing them earlier on. And I just remember that the mouthfeel was like phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Just getting that. And then, you know, that's what you're kind of seeing that. And that's, you kind of need that low bitterness and you have to. It's kind of a fun. Yeah, it's funny because there has been two and a half years since Machine and since Bridge did that. But I'll mention like a hazy IPA to someone who's kind of casually in the green. They're like, what's that? Like, I've never heard of it. I'm like, how do you know what? <laughs> but then some people, they just don't know, right? So they're not paid an IPA to them. So Yeah. And there's a lot of people who aren't willing to pay 20 bucks or a four pack too. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. not cheap. Yeah. You were saying with your hop loss and all that stuff, like it's it's an expensive beer to, to make. Yeah, we have. There's all the hops to go in there, but well, uh, even before the hop loss, it's like expensive. Yeah, it is. We average about a twenty five percent loss in volume to hops. Wow, which is that's a lot. Yeah. yeah. If you if you had a centrifuge, but would that ruin really just the? Uh, yeah, the and then the centrifuge is from the kettle out to the fermenter, so. Like that's just gonna save you from some of the whirlpool hops, which is oh uh, yeah, the dry hops, thing. the higher yeah, yeah, you don't save, and that's where hop powder comes into play. I guess the lupulin yeah. powder. We don't we haven't used any since we started canning, but at Calister we use a lot of. I think us and Twin Cells were the first two breweries in BC to really use it a lot earlier on. Now it's more common, and it's uh it's interesting. It works really well if you have it dialed in correctly, and it's uh, a good quality lupulin powder. But you can get this weird kind of flavor. Like I've tasted a bunch of hundred percent lupulin powder beers, and some of ours that have a higher percentage, they definitely have a distinctive flavor. I would call it an off flavor, but they definitely mm -hmm. got a weird. Distinct, yeah, yeah. It's not. yeah, and I don't enjoy it as much. But if you dial it in, use it correctly, it's it's not it's, it's good. But it's it's an interesting product. Um, yeah, like I said, we aren't using it currently, but next year we'll probably look at using it. Try to it into some of our recipes, but. Yeah, just getting that ratio dialed percentage wise. And... All right, I'm gonna grab the cannons. You guys are all good. You guys got your yeah, yeah. Are you down there. Number three, ten was that? Petty. That's my favorite. As soon as I tasted it, I was like, oh, it's too bad. It's so great. Yeah, it's, that's why it's an older cannon. Yeah, yeah. that's a little sage. Yeah. Does it, does it have a brew date on there or anything, or candy? Yeah, I have a feeling it's an older. It definitely the taste of you know, aged hops. Let's do that. Yep. Yeah. Number one was juicy. Juicy as fuck. <laughs> For me. Uh, so that was number one. Number two was Superflux. We say Topper. And then this bright from uh, Trio Spring is number four. Mm -hmm. Number five was. Was this one from Structures called Ken? It's Fuzz. It's oh, Fuzz, okay. Yeah, so where you guys, where you uh, get their 10, what's your favorite one? Um, had to go with number one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, that was my first time ever trying that, and I was really oh, right? that was in the lineup, because I wasn't able to get them when it hit stores. And it was really nice. I like that. Yeah. That, like, it's, pillow is a good, good term for the low feel, just, you can just drink that and you know that it's a high ABV, but you don't taste it. It's, yeah, it's balanced, it, it's a fucking good beer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to go find something. So do I. <laughs> again? I might have more in my house, I'll let you know. It might be my wife's, so we'll, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> Which was your uh, top one? Kind of biased, so yeah, I also chose Juicy. 
Yeah, but you know it's here, so I'm the only one who that. But I guess you probably yeah, know you've made it. Yeah. Like, I know this one. Yeah. But you also have that as a high one, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number one was my high. Yeah. Same. Yeah. So I guess it wasn't biased, it was, it was a general consensus. It was the best one, yeah. yeah. Also, to be fair though, it's probably, like, it didn't travel. I bought it yeah. recently and went straight into my fridge. Never moved the muscle until. Is yeah. that a fresh batch? Yeah. I think it was three weeks ago, four weeks ago, last month? November. Fairly, fairly recent. November 20, 23rd or something. Yeah. yeah, so not even. That's pretty too, because even thinking, you know, the, the shelf life on something like that is so short. Yeah. You know how long it's been in the, the liquor store, right? Yeah. Number two was Super Fox. What did you give that one there, Tim? Uh, three and a half. Yeah, I'll be, I'll give it 3.7. I like four. Four. I was four point one. Four point one. So yeah. Uh, but so I like that break through. from the super hazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A little more clear. Again, it has that slight heat from the alcohol. Yeah. But it's good. Like, yeah. Definitely, definitely. It's good. probably the freshest one, and that might be the one. That, that is the freshest one. It might not even, last week. Yeah, it'd be even better in a week. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'll have to more, I guess. Yeah. Hetty, uh, the original one from Alchemist was Hetty Talker. That's, I got to say it's probably old as, old as fuck, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't travel from yeah. Vermont to Quebec to here, probably all via mail. So it's yeah, not like it's going to go So just put that in. in I think it was like a few years ago when I was first getting to be a someone sent me, you know, a few cans before like the whole haze craze hit. Yeah. yeah. In BC and Lower Mainland. And I remember being like, wow, that was one of the best beers, if not yeah. best IPA yeah. I've had. But after the last, you know, couple of years or whatever of having so many of them, it's funny how like I mean, like you said, that one had traveled a bit, so it's yeah. not as fresh. But like, it's where local stuff's on the same level. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like someone brought one to a Van Brewer's summer party. I think it was Josh. Yeah, Josh. He brought a bunch, yeah, he brought a bunch of Trillium and this, and I remember he grabbed the hair house and was like. Yeah, I see, I see why people are so stoked on this beer. It's a good beer. Yeah. It's unfortunate it's not the best sample for it, so. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I don't <laughs> know what it is. You, you think it's a lot. Yeah, it's just old hops. Yeah, that's all the hops you're tasting. Yeah. No, no refrigeration in the mail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, it's probably cool outside, but that's about it, right? Yeah. Like, that's, <laughs> that's the that. man keeps it's a package. package. Yeah. <laughs> it's a similar uh, aroma as really, like, undeveloped barley wines. Have that like I yeah don't know what it is but there's this this aroma to it that I just know yeah some time yeah so it's whereas this is old right well, you got it on the nose so. number four was break right. from oh. Trios is pretty good mm -hmm. I've never had this beer before no I never had it no first treehouse I've had so it's good yeah both yeah. yeah. either in can we say perpetuity perpetuity. Whatever, I had one of their other IPAs today. Fucking really good. You're from Massachusetts, right? I don't know, well, like, I mean, Massachusetts or Vermont, only here. It's yeah. probably higher. Massachusetts. Boston. Let's see. It's not even Boston. I hate to rush you guys, we've got uh, eight minutes to drink those beers, so. No worries. <laughs> don't, don't, uh. Lucky I was just going to say that too much. Yeah, I was a toss up between this one and Fuzz, actually. I'm surprised how, like, yeah. Like the local beers hanging with these, no problem. Yep. Yeah. Number five was uh, Fuzz from Structures. And I gave that, I thought it was my second favorite yeah, one. Same. Again, but very fresh, you just bought it. Yeah, it was just together. released yesterday. Yeah, so, <laughs> so there's something yeah, to say for, for local because it's fresh yeah. and yeah. it travels well. Oh, yeah, I remember so you said it's cold. Yeah. yeah. Well, really? and when you can go to the brewery to get it, you yeah. know, that there hasn't been that. That, that Sitting black cell in the liquor board. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For a month. More hot. Like yeah. While they clear it and yeah. all that. Yeah. So it's been a really even. We'd have to get beer from East Coast and West Coast and like mail it all to Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah. Drink it there. See how it happens. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to do otherwise. So we're all flying out. Just shaking up. Can that damage it here or just no? Not really. Not really. And then what we I saw these like. If they sat for a while, there's that. We do like a the northeast roll. You take the can and just roll it gently. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like you might with a wet or heavy. Same with the kegs. Like if they're dropping, like our second batch of Ad Seeker was pretty clearish too. So uh, we did the tap takeover 12 kings. We told them just to. 
put it upside down for a bit of roll it just to try and get the yeast like everything back in suspension. Yeah, yeah. Because it does affect the flavor as it drops out. Like too, I wouldn't necessarily want to drink that true with the bottom. No. But when it's blended in, it's fine. Yeah. So. So yeah, if you pour if you're pouring one. You know, if it's been sitting for a while, you might not want to dump the bottom in, or if you yeah. do swirl, like it depends. I'm always like, ah, do I pour? So yeah, we keep chatting for a bit, and it's uh, it's nothing important. We're just chit chatting. Here's the scores, though. You can see it's fairly consistent between the four of us. And uh, here's the total scores right here. Uh, Juicy won at 18.4 out of 20. Fuzz was uh, second place. Bright and pretty much yeah, we're pretty much tied with Hetty unfortunately coming in uh, last place. But again, that, that can was not a good example of it. Kent and I have both had it before, and uh, we both knew that was not a good example. But yeah, so it looks like the, the West Coast is doing okay. But again, it's not really fair because <laughs> the West Coast stuff was very fresh. And yeah, all the beers are really good. And uh, thanks for uh, to everyone who came out to help drink me the beer with me. And thanks to you guys for watching. And if you like it, uh, subscribe, like, all that stuff, and uh, maybe put out a new episode probably every month, hopefully more, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Thanks again for watching.